Hello everyone. So today what we're going to be doing is taking a look at how to write a program in C that calls a function written in assembler for the AVR style of microcontrollers using uh, XC8, the compiler sort of tool that comes with MPLAB X, which is really under the hood GCC, which is what we've always been using for the Atmega processors. Okay, so the very first thing to know is that there is a really good document called MPLAB XC8 C Compiler User's Guide for AVR MC or Microcontroller Units. So I recommend going to that page, that PDF, and taking a look. And so what we're going to do is search in here for the mixing C and assembly code. This section of the document is similar for many different chips that are supported by microchip, not just the uh, AVRs. So there's an example in here, and basically the example says that you um, uh, write your assembler like this, and then you call it from a main function like that. So let, let's do that. So we're going to start a new project, a standalone project. We're going to use the classic at mega 328p that's found on the Arduinos. Nope, gotta spell that right. At mega 328p. Use the simulator, XC8 2.32, and we're going to call it um, AVR assembler function call, like that. That's our project name. All right, so in the project name, I go into source files and I say that I want a C main file. Main, I'm just going to call it main call assembler. That so it's distinct from other main files that I make. We're going to convert this right here to a void. We're going to make that a zero. And we're going to make this xc.h like that. All right, so we've got the main file right there. And we're just going to copy this out. So I say right here, extern int plus int, like that. Now, this right here is going to be uh, not only the name of the assembler file, but also the name of the function that I'm calling from C that's written in assembler or assembly. All right, so plus is important right here. And next up, it's declared extern like that. That's important. That keyword right there is, is important. Otherwise, it won't find it. And now I need to use the volatile keyword, volatile, unsigned int result is equal to zero. So I'm going to set a variable called result to a value of zero. I'm going to declare it as volatile because I don't want the C compiler to optimize it away because we're calling it in a non-traditional kind of way. Okay, and the, the uh, optimizer will absolutely get rid of it uh, if given the chance, or very likely to do that. Uh, next, we're going to say result is equal to plus, that's the function call, and we're going to put 55 into it. All right, and just for good measure, I'm going to use that variable afterwards so that, again, during compilation, it recognizes it. We're going to say result is equal to result plus 100, just like that, just to say that it, it does something with it. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. Oh, not yet. Okay. I will set breakpoints afterwards. Now, um, oops, I guess I had a simulation going on in the background. Let's set up breakpoints right now. There we go. Breakpoint and I'm going to try. It's not working. There we go. All right. So next up, I want to add in out of source files, a regular no nothing file with no file extension an empty file, just like this. And the reason is because I have to add a dot capital S file extension, which isn't available by default. Otherwise, this doesn't work. The compiler and the assembler won't be able to recognize the file. I don't know why that's the case, but it is. And it's explained actually in the document. Uh, where is it? We need a dot S extension right here. 
Okay, so we're going to call this new file plus dot capital S like that. And you can see that it's within my source files directory. And I don't know why this is still here. That happens sometimes in MPLAB X. So now we're going to write in the assembler function. So we go like this. We go include xc.h and in MPLAB X, this xc.h is a catch-all. It will, uh, using the compiler tools, figure out what actually is needed. So you just put xc.h in there and it works for PIC microcontrollers. It works for the AVRs, etc. It's just a good idea in general to put it in there. All right, so we're going to put dot section dot text, and that's really a declaration of the memory area that this program is going to be, or this function is going to be written into. Don't worry about why it's called dot text, um, but it's just a standard thing that uh, you find typically in GCC programs uh, with embedded systems. So dot global, we're going to make the plus function name available globally so it can be called from the C main file. All right, then we're going to actually declare that function. We're going to say plus like this with a colon. And then I'm not putting in the comments. The comments are available in that document right there. I'm going to transfer the contents of special function register IO address is how I grab it of port D. So I'm going to grab the contents of the port D register in simulation. It'll just be zero. Um, and I'm going to put it in register R18. Semicolon like that. And then I go add. Actually, I think in this case, I don't think I need the semicolon. I think the semicolon is just there um, for comments if I want to put it in. It's not like the semicolon in C. Um, add R24, so register 24 will uh, be added to register 18 and stored in uh, R24. And we're going to take R25 and we're going to put the contents of R1, basically 0, into it. And the reason we're using R25 and R24, these two registers, this register pair, is that they're the ones that are being assigned to reading in the parameter for the function. Okay, so the function uh, has an, uh, a parameter that's passing it, being passed into it, and that's being stored in register R24 and R25. In this case, it's just 8 bits, so it'll be in R24, the bottom 8 bits. After that, nothing, and then we're going to do a return like that. You can see that's the end right here. It's confusing because the, the program itself or the, the function itself spans over two pages. So we do a return, whoops, ret like that. So that's the assembler mnemonic for return. And then we're going to declare that this is the end right here. All right. And so that is all of the contents from the PDF. We're going to save that. I'm going to go back into here and I'm going to hit the compile button. And it compiles. Now, if I hadn't put this line in here, no, sorry, this line right here, line 20, then you might have gotten an error. So if you get an error in this process, just put a trivial little operation afterwards. And then you can even add in something like this while one, which is basically going to. Uh, we'll do it like this. ASM NOP. We're just going to put a trivial little place for things to lock into when and if, if and when it gets past result plus 100. Okay, so now I'm going to hit the simulate or debug button like this. We've now landed right here. I am going to expand this out and I will step into because I'm going to step into the function in a moment. So we're going to step into the plus function now. So we're going to jump over to assembler. And here we go. We've jumped into the assembler routine right here. Uh, we've got the program counter. The program counter is telling us where we are in memory. Um, 
let's see, where are we going? So port D is going to be transferred in. And if we take a look at, oops, hold on. There we go. And look for port D. There it is. So port D has a contents of a zero. We're going to bring it into R18, which is right there. It's going to be zero. So basically zero is going to get transferred in. So nothing changes. Now we're going to add the contents of register 18 to register 24. Register 24 has the contents um, 55. That's the, the, the value that we sent in via the input parameter of the function. Then we're going to put zero into R25, so nothing will happen there. And we're going to return. And oops, not that one. In here, we're going to add a watch, new watch for result. And result initially was uh, zero because it was set to that. Now that we're going to return, from here, it should turn into 55. So we're going to go step. And sure enough, it's been changed to 55, like that. And now if I step through, it'll add 100 to it. You can see that 100 has been added to it. And now we're in the, the loop. OK, so what we've done here is we've created a main function. That main function is written entirely basically in C. But what we're going to do, or what we have done, is we've allowed it to access an assembler function that's been defined externally and written completely, basically, except for this line right here, the include, it's been written entirely in assembler. So if you need to create a from scratch assembler function or routine, you can do it and you can call it from C. So you can manage the project in C and you can do special little things that are required in assembler and, and go back and forth between your C and your assembler cleanly. Mm -hmm.